around that you can come to the church in person, please do to be around. We would like to start a service with a worship. So I would like to invite the worship team to take over. And after then, the service will continue. God bless you. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the worship this morning. Come on, bless the name of the Lord this morning. Thank him for his goodness towards us. Let's thank him for his protection, his guidance. The Lord has been with us from January till today, the 8th of November, 2020. It is by his grace and his mercies that we are counted amongst the living this morning. I just want you from the bottom of your heart, bless the name of the Lord, bless his name. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we have been? From the depth of our heart, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Like all upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart, I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish my own you. Till every drop is gone I'll pour my love like all Like all upon your feet Like wine for you to drink Like water from my heart I pour my love on you if praise is like perfume, I'll lavish my own you till every drop is gone. I'll pour like all upon your feet, like wine for you to drink. Like water from my heart, I pour my love. If praise was like perfume, I'm loving on you. Like water from my heart, I pour my love on you. If praise was like the field, I'll love it on you. Till every drop is gone, till every drop is gone, I'll pour my love. This morning, we are called your holy name. There's none like you, God. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Mama. Yeah, Rabba, yeah, Amaya, 
Hallelujah to your name. Come on, bless us then this morning. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Manamos ayabali ke ya malama yande. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing all the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. And I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness. In the goodness. One more time. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me, Lord. You have led me to the fire. In darkest night. In darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a father. And I've known you as a friend. I know you as a friend. And I have lived. I have lived in a goodness. So, so good with every breath, with every breath that I am. And I will say, all the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, Lord. You have been faithful. All my life you've been so good. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I'm able I will say all the goodness All my life you've been faithful to me, oh God All my life you have been faithful All my life you've been so good all my life you have been so so good with every breath I'm able I will say I will say all the goodness of God oh your goodness is running after it's running up to me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you every day Your goodness is running after It's running after His goodness keeps running after us Say it Your goodness running after your goodness is running after us it keeps chasing after me it keeps chasing after me Oh. 
all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank the you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Begin to sing the goodness of the Lord this morning. Just appreciate the Lord in your heart. Just appreciate the Lord in your heart. Sing of His goodness this morning. Just say something to the Lord. Just worship Him in your heart. Worship Him in your heart. In just a few seconds, just worship the Lord. Just appreciate the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. We are grateful, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can take your seat now. We, we thank God for this morning, and we are about taking our offering. So I entreat you to prepare your project offering as we bless the Lord with it. And I'll, if you are ready, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to bless your work. We pray that, Lord, as this that we are given, let it be seeds that we are planted. And we pray that, Lord, may you receive it and bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. The worship team will lead us as we bring our offering. Here I am before you. Come and seek your truth. Knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place. Because of you, I'm freely. My life to you, oh God, I give. So I stand before you, God. I let my voice, cause you set me free. So I shout out your name. From the rooftops, I proclaim that I am yours. I am yours. To your loving hands, I am your, I am your. So I shout out your name from the rooftops. I proclaim that I am yours. Hallelujah! I am yours. Hallelujah! God bless you. Please take your seat. If you are watching us online, I want to once again encourage you to share the link to other people to join the service online. And if you are close to the church in Sunyane, please make sure you find yourself in this service or any of the service that we'll be doing after this. Uh, the word of God is about coming, but before then, we want to take a special song just to prepare the way for the man of God. That is Dr. Gospel Damikan to the senior pastor of Ilim City, Sunyane. I would like to invite the worship team to lead us in a special song as he de bless our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. You put your love on the To bear the weight of sin that was mine. Thank you, Jesus. on the line to bear the weight of sin that was mine was sin my river of wrong with arms held high Lord, I give my life, knowing I 
am found in Christ in your love forever wait all I am in your grace I stand the greatest of all romance love of God my Savior wait all I am well I found in Christ in your love forever wait all I am in your grace I stand the greatest of all romance love of God Like hurricane wind, fierce love led way to my soul. When arms held high, Lord, I give my life, knowing I'm found in Christ in your love. Forever wait all I am in your grace I stand the greatest of all romance love of God my Savior we love you Lord we love you Lord sing to the one to the one who has rescued my soul to the one who has welcomed me home to the one who is savior of all I sing forever to the one who has rescued my soul to the one who has welcomed me home, to the one who is Savior of all, I sing for it. To the one, to the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home. 
Lord, I give my life knowing I'm found in Christ in your love forever with all I am in your grace I stand the greatest of all romance love of God my Savior with all I am Lord I give my found in Christ in your love forever wait all I am in your grace I stand the greatest of all romance love of God Father, this morning we want to praise you and thank you for all that you've done for us. We stand here not on our own merit. We stand on, on your grace, on your love, on what you have shown to us, which is beyond what we can even comprehend. We bless you this morning that you have good intentions for us to prosper us and give us hope to help us to walk before you and be the people you want us to be. We ask, oh God, in our pursuit to honor you, that you allow your word to sing through us in all strength and power. Help us to be able to incline our ears to your word and walk by them, live by them, do what you require of us. We bless you. We thank you that you're using this vessel as a vessel of honor to bless your name and to bring understanding to the simple. We exhort you in Jesus' name and the church shout amen. Good morning. Please take your seat. God bless you. It's good to see all of you. It's a new day. It's a Sunday, and every Sunday gives me hope. Every Sunday, I look forward to the fellowship and the joy that we have together. Hallelujah. I don't know what's happening, but... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please don't bring me a microphone. I think this, this will be okay. It's not very well. Amen. I hope you can hear me now. 
All right. Please apologize on my behalf on online. I, I, I know people get disrupted with some of these things. All right. We've been talking about 50 days of love. And we are on week four. We started with week zero. So today is actually the fifth week since we launched this program. And in this, we've been talking about love and treating ourselves to practical ways to love people and to love God. Today, our focus is on love is respectful. Love is respectful. And it's week four. Love is respectful. I want you to read with me first. Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. It says, Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. I read again. It says, Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. What it simply means is, if you have love, you will treat people respectfully and you will show respect to other people. That's what it means. That anybody who claims to have love will treat people respectfully. They will treat people well. They will respect others. You cannot disrespect people and claim to be somebody who loves people. It's impossible for us to show that we love by disrespecting other people. Because Love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love is respecting others. The idea of respect is not just ethical. Sometimes we think that it is ethical. It is just human to show respect to people. But the Bible talks a lot about it. So it goes beyond just being ethical. It is something that God requires of us. I believe that it is moral. It's important for us to be able to respect people. It's God's dream and vision for you and I. It is required of us as Christians to be able to show respect. When you read through the Bible, you find out that the Bible talks about respect in several ways. I will not be able to talk about all that, but the few that I can bring to you this morning is what I'm going to make an attempt to bring to you. When you look at the third book of Moses, Leviticus chapter 19, you realize that respect is talked about in that book. In verse 3, particularly, the Bible says, respect your father and your mother. And it goes on to say that I am the Lord, your God. Respect your father and mother. So we have an obligation as Christians to respect our fathers and our mothers. That is what the Bible says. It's required of us to respect fathers and mothers. It also says in verse 32 that I command you to show respect for older people and to obey me with fear and trembling. So God says he commands us. We know what a command is. A command is not something that you can negotiate. A command is something that you have to carry out. It is an instruction. It is something that you have to obey and do. Especially in the army, when you are given a command, you cannot go and negotiate that. You have to make sure that you carry it out. And the Bible says that God said, I command you to show respect for older people. We all know who, who older people are. People who are older than us. Bible says it's a command that we should be able to respect them. And it says to obey me with fear and trembling. Here, God is also saying that obeying him in fear is a respect to God. When you obey God, you are respecting God. You are valuing who he is. You are really appreciating who God is. He said obey me with fear and and trembling. So we have to also obey God to show our respect for him. There are numerous examples that we can give throughout the Bible. 
One of them can be found in First Samuel chapter 2. A lot of you know the story that is written there. It's about Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They were priests in the temple. And they disrespected God by taking the chunk meat that people brought for sacrifice. They had special fork and they would go for the meat that was so fresh. The ones that they looked very good. That was what they would eat. The sacrifice that they are offering to God, they were also eating from it. And the Bible also says that they went about sleeping with the ladies that were in the temple or people that came to worship or serve God. They were making their selection. They had a fork and they had a choice. And I think that sometimes we also do that. We disrespect God in such ways, especially when it comes to church. I've realized that there are a lot of people who come to church. The moment they see a church, people gather together, they think it's an opportunity for them to be able to have what they want. So they also come in with the agenda. They come with fork to pick up what they want. A lot of people come, they want to use their people for their own achievement and their own goal. They want to use the people for their own selfish ambition and they come and they sow seeds of division and controversy among the people because everything is about them. People come to church with needs that have to be met. There's nothing wrong with that, but when it becomes you, then it means that you are disrespecting God. You want the best for yourself and not for God. Sometimes we even divert the course of the church and the people that are in the church for our own interests. And this was the problem of Eli Eli's two sons. And God told Eli, he said, talk to your children. Deal with them on what they're doing. He spoke to his children, but the Bible says he did not restrain his children. So at the end, the two of them died at war, and Eli also died by hearing the news of the death of his children. Respecting God is very important. We have to have respect for God and we have to have respect for people. In Ephesians chapter 5, husbands and wives are told, they are encouraged to respect each other. Mutual respect. You say, Pastor, well, they said the wife should respect the husband and the husband should love the wife. That is true, but read the whole contest. Read the whole chapter and, and see what the Bible talks about. The understanding is mutual respect is needed. Mutual love is also needed. We have to be able to respect and love each other as the Bible says. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says slaves and masters should also have mutual respect. They should respect each other. In this modern day application, we may not talk about slaves and masters. Because we have gone beyond that. I know people are still in slavery. I know in certain cultures and in certain places, people are still practicing slaves and masters. But in generality, we will say that this application has to do with subordinates and superiors. That it doesn't matter who we are. We may be superiors, but we have to be able to respect our subordinates. And subordinates have the responsibility to also respect their superiors. So in the Bible, we are told to respect each other. First Peter chapter 2 verse 17 from the New Living Translation makes it even clear. It brings us to another category altogether. It says, show respect for everyone and love your Christian brothers and sisters. Show respect to everyone. Respect everyone. Everyone. And everyone means everyone. It doesn't matter who they are. Show respect for everyone and love your Christian brothers and sisters. We, we even have a tough time loving ourselves as brothers and sisters in Christ. So how are we going to be able to love everyone? How are we going to be able to reach out to others? That is what the Bible requires of us. We should show respect for everyone and love our Christian brothers and sisters. You may be asking, Pastor, what is respect? 
Respect simply is showing value and honor to others by your actions. By your actions. What do you do? If you begin to show value and honor to others by your actions, it means that you are respecting them. Respect is not in your head. Respect is not just in your heart. Respect is in practicality, is in action. You show respect to people by your act. If you trample over people, if you, you, you use words that are not supposed to use, on people if you ignore people if you walk over them if you treat them like non-entities that is absolute disrespect you cannot respect somebody by just treading upon them so we have to realize that by valuing people and honoring them in our actions we are respecting them most often our actions devalue people it dishonors people. Most often, we depreciate the value that is in people. We disrespect them. But we have to do the opposite. We have to honor, we have to value, and we have to respect everyone. Everyone. It means that if you are older, you have to respect even children. Everyone needs to be respected because that is what God requires of us. When you meet people, do they matter to you? That's a question I want to ask you today. When you meet people, do they matter to you? Do they have any worth at all in your estimation? There are a lot of us that people don't have value to us. When we meet them, they don't have any worth at all. But do people mean something to you when you meet them? Or you see them as something else? Do you esteem people when you come in contact with them? Or you feel they are just ordinary? Do people also feel better or worse after they've been with you? When people leave your presence, do they feel inspired? Do they feel valued? Do they feel respected? When you have contact with people and they are leaving, do they feel worse? Do they feel diminish or do they feel unappreciated and most often that is the case you have squabbles and, and problems with somebody and by the time they are leaving they feel so down because you said certain things and you put them down there are a lot of us our habit is to say things use words on people that make them feel they are nothing we reduce them to nothing by our words we just want them to know that they are nobodies that they don't qualify. They are not up to our standard. They don't have our qualification. They don't have our wisdom. They don't have our grace. They don't have the favor that we have. They don't know anybody. And we do that most often. Sometimes unintentionally, but it is something that is in us that is rolled out. So when people leave your presence, how do they feel? Do you tear them apart? I'm not saying that if people are wrong, don't correct them. But the means of correction has to be proper. It has to show respect. And even when we correct them, we have to be able to encourage them and build them up knowing that they are able to rise up above their limitation. We don't leave them open doors. And they go with a different mindset that they are not valued or respected. We have to show respect to people. It is by this way that you and I can determine whether we respect people or not. Do people want to draw closer to you? Or anytime they see you, they are drawing away because they know you're going to say something or do something that will make them feel they are nobody. You're going to question their character. You're going to pin them to the wall. You're going to say something that will tear them and they will find it difficult to mend their own self. So check yourself how you value people. And that is what respect is all about. When you read the scriptures, Jesus Christ was absolutely the best in showing honor and love and respect to people. Jesus showed honor. Jesus showed respect. Jesus showed how worthy people were anytime he came in contact with them. People...
just felt valued anytime they had contact with Jesus. Anytime they came to his presence, they left with something. He impressed them. He touched them by his respect for the people. He did it by the things that he did for them. Sometimes he did things for them that made them feel, oh, he respect us. Sometimes he did it with them. The things he did with them made them realize that he has great respect for us. Sometimes it was the words that he spoke to them that made them feel respected when they left his presence. And with that, when you go through Jesus' life, you can come across numerous examples on how he respected people and how his contact with people transformed the lives of the people. I can talk about Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, the Bible says that Jesus was walking through Jericho. And while he was walking through Jericho, there was this rich man who through dubious means had made wealth. A man that was a tax collector known as Zacchaeus. And he heard that Jesus was coming his way. And what did he do? Because he wanted to see Jesus. He ran ahead. He knew the limitation in his life. Bible says that he was a short man. So he ran ahead. He knew that the only way he could see Jesus was to climb a tree. So he went up on a sycamore tree. And when Jesus was walking, he got right where the tree was. And Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I must spend the day in your house. I will stay in your home. And it was a transformation point for Zacchaeus. Why? Because first of all, he was classified as a sinner. Everybody knew him to be a person who was a froster. He was a cheater. He was somebody who took money from people. He was somebody who took beyond what was expected in taxation. So he had been classified as a person who was not clean by the people. So he didn't have any moral right to have contact with Jesus, the Holy Son of God. That was not going to be allowed. So that was his first limitation. His second limitation, by his own realization, he was short. He felt he didn't have what it takes to be able to see Jesus. He saw that limitation in himself. Physically, he didn't have the height. So these two things disqualified him from seeing Jesus, but he made an effort. He climbed a tree. And while he was there, Jesus called on him to come down. And he said, don't just come down. I'm going to spend the day in your house. I'm going to stay in your home. Irrespective of what people think about you as a sinner, as somebody who is not qualified, I am God's son. I am God himself. And I'm going to identify myself with you. And it made Zacchaeus feel great. Awesome. How do you feel when everybody condemns you and God comes around and says, you are a lovely child of mine. How do you feel when everybody says you are a sinner and God comes and says, you are so dear to my heart. And that is what Jesus did. Bible says immediately the man encountered this. Zacchaeus encountered this. He said, Lord, I give half of my wealth, half of my possession to the poor. Nobody asked him to do that. He was touched by the value that was placed on him. The respect for him made him make a decision he said i give half of my possession to the poor restitution was in place and he said if i have defrauded anybody i want to quadruple it and give it back to the person anybody that i've cheated i am ready nobody asked him to make those confessions but when we show love to people we show them the love of god when we show respect to people we open them up for the touch of god and miracles happen in their lives there are a lot of people that make the gospel a weapon to beat up people the gospel is not a weapon to tear people down the gospel is a weapon of grace to lift people and put them on a platform. I believe that a lot of the times when we begin to preach fire and brimstone like John the Baptist who ate locusts and, and drank honey. 
and shout and repent for the kingdom of God. And today we have people who feel the message has to come in that way. But the man he introduced, Jesus himself came and he said, you are a sinner, but I'm going to spend the night in your house. Let me tell you, when we show respect and love and show the grace of God, it's able to have a lasting conviction on people than when we put fear in them. When you put fear in them, fear cannot be something that can guarantee the life of people forever. One day that fear will be broken. But love will always be at work. When we show the love, and Jesus showed this love, and Zacchaeus said, I change. <laughs> I have so much love that I have no choice than to change. I'm not being condemned by the master himself, so I want to change. And that was how Jesus operated. He respected people. In Luke chapter 7, verse 37 to 48, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation another story, an encounter between Jesus and a woman. Bible says one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to come to his home for a meal. So Jesus accepted the invitation and sat down to eat. A certain immoral woman, a certain immoral woman, the woman was immoral. A certain immoral woman had he was there and brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume. Listen, it was an expensive perfume in a beautiful jar. The Bible describes it perfectly. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. When the Bible says she knelt behind Jesus and was weeping, if you are not careful, you will not understand. Why would she kneel behind Jesus weeping? Those days, when they sat, they would incline to their side as if they are sitting on a mat. And when you sit that way, your feet get behind you. So the woman saw the feet of Jesus behind. The feet of Jesus, was he was not sitting this way. He was inclining himself by the side on a mat, so his feet were behind him. And the Bible says that the woman knelt behind him at his feet weeping her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them when the Pharisee who was the host saw what was happening and who the woman was he said to himself this proved that Jesus is no prophet if God had really sent him, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. Verse 40 says, Jesus spoke up and answered the Pharisees' thoughts. Can you just imagine? He knew what was going on in the mind of this Pharisee. So he had not uttered words, but Jesus knew what he was thinking. So Jesus answered his thoughts. I believe that he answers our thoughts every day and every now and then. If you read your devotion very well, if you are somebody who is religious with your devotion, you realize that sometimes when you read your devotion, it speaks to your thinking. God has answers for us all the time. Before we even ask the questions, he has the answers. Jesus spoke up and answered the Pharisee's thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. All right, teacher. Simon replied, go ahead. Then Jesus told him the story. A man loaned money to two people. 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces of silver to another. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Simon, who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and he said to Simon. He turned to the woman 
and he said to Simon, Jesus will turn to you and speak to your accusers. He turned to the woman and he said to Simon, he will always speak to your critics. He turned to Simon and he spoke, he turned to the woman and spoke to Simon. You didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. This was just a common courtesy. The man was a bad host. <laughs> but she's washed them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss of greeting. That was also a common courtesy. But she has kissed my feet again and again from the first time I came in. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she's anointed my feet with pure or rare perfume. I tell you, Simon, her sins, though they are many, her sins, though are many, have been forgiven. And so, she loves me much. But a person who is forgiving little shows only a little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. This is an amazing story. A woman that was disqualified by society standing before the king of kings and showing all the courteous acts that the host, a Pharisee, who's supposed to be a religious person, had neglected. Sometimes we will be so religious that we don't honor God and respect God the way we should. Being religious doesn't mean that you are honoring God. We have to be able to be conscious and deliberately honor God and respect Him. This woman, being a sinner, came and at the feet of Jesus she started crying and wiping his feet the feet of dust with her hair you know that the hair of every woman is her treasure women that are here you know how precious your hair is that's why you go to the saloon every now and then that's why it takes 3 hours, 4 hours, 6 hours for you to sit down for somebody to plait your hair Sometimes you finish and you can't even turn your neck, but you still want to keep it. Why? Because your hair is so important. It adds to your beauty. And this woman comes and she brings her beauty and everything to the feet of Jesus and use it as a rag and wipe the feet of Jesus with tears. And the Bible says he kept kissing his feet and kept anointing the feet of Jesus. And the people knew that she was a sinner. If this had happened in our day, it would have appeared in all the news in the world. He said he's a prophet. He said he's a man of God. He is the first person to know who this woman is. She is a sinner. An immoral woman. A woman that is in probably prostitution or something. She was so degraded in society that nobody respected her. And yet, she was at the feet of Jesus, touching Jesus, kissing Jesus, wiping the feet of Jesus. And the people said, look at this man. He's enjoying services from somebody who is immoral. They even saw it beyond service. He was romancing the feet of Jesus, probably. And he said, you're a prophet and you're enjoying it. It was so questionable in the, in the mind of even the host. And Jesus had to address the situation. To him that much is given, much is expected. Her sins were so much and they had been forgiven her. So she valued what had been forgiven her. When you come to the presence of God, sometimes you find people, when we are worshiping, they don't even know what to do because they don't even know what God has done. My friend, if you will be able to bring your mind and your conscience to the understanding of what God has done in your life, you will weep. You will kneel down. You will roll over. 
You will not just be looking around when we are worshiping. You will not be taking a phone call. You will not be running out and in of the church whilst worship is going on because you see it as a solemn moment to express your love and your respect to God. How do you respect God? By worshiping him and taking a mobile phone call. How do you respect God? By just looking at people, becoming a spectator instead of becoming a worshiper. It depends on what he's done in your life. And how much you respect and value God. If you respect and value God, when you come to his presence, your attitude will be ordered by your own beliefs. We have to be able to show that respect to God. There are about four invisible signs of respect that are in this story that need to be replicated. Anytime you and I come in contact with people. About four things that we have to do when we come in contact with people. As far as respect is concerned. One, stop talking and listen. Stop. Stop talking and listen. From this story, you realize that Jesus was a wonderful listener. He was listening. I believe that he was listening to the woman and he was also listening to Simon the Pharisee. Although they were not talking, Jesus was listening. He could read their thoughts. The woman never uttered a word, but Jesus listened to her. Would you agree that the woman was saying something by what she was doing? She was definitely up to something. She was saying something by her action. And people did not hear her. All they could see was a sinner at work. But God heard her clearly. Jesus knew what she was talking about. Listening goes beyond just you and I hearing people. Listening is not just about hearing words. When it comes to listening to another person, it's not just hearing words from them. Our eyes, I believe that, must be able to see beyond. We have to be able to feel their heart. We have to feel what is going on within them. We have to read in between the lines. We have to listen in to the moment of silence that is going on. In silence, sometimes there's a voice. We have to listen. We have to listen. If we don't listen to people and we only want to hear words, we will not be able to know what's going on. So open your eyes and look beyond words. Look at the heart of people. If people are bleeding, you know. If they are happy, you know. If they are sad, you know. By listening to them. Listen to what they say and listen to the hurt behind. Listen to the anger behind. Listen to what they have, the reason behind the reason. Jesus had that. He was able to listen. The woman was speaking so loudly in her tears and in her service to Christ. Sometimes people speak with their service. Sometimes people speak with their tears. You ask them a question and they start crying. They don't say anything. And the crying has a language. It has a voice. Sometimes people are serving and the quality of their service and their dedication to what they are doing speaks volumes. We have to listen. And Jesus knew that something was happening. She was washing the feet of Jesus with her tears. Wiping them with her hair kissing the feet over and over again if this is not a voice then I don't know what a voice is it's an invisible voice it's a language that only people who listen carefully can understand she spoke to Jesus and Jesus understood she had a message but it seems only Jesus could hear her other people could not hear Only Jesus was the one that was listening and that was why he was the only person who heard. If you and I will listen, we will also hear. If we will listen, we will hear the heartbeat of people. We will hear the heartbeat of God. 
We will know what God wants us to do if we will listen. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. He wrote to the Corinthians and congratulated them on the experience of his friend Titus. Because Titus visited and came back with news. And Paul wrote to them and congratulated them for their way of dealing with Titus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, the New Living Translation says, Titus remembers the way you listened to him and welcomed him with such respect and deep concern. Why would Titus feel respected and feel that they were of concern concerning him? It was the way they welcomed him and the way they listened to him. When people listen to you, you feel valued. When people listen, take their time to listen to you, you feel that you are respected. When they ignore you and they don't listen to you, it makes you feel disrespected. And Titus was listened to. He felt that respect. Do people around you feel respected? Because you listen to them or because you didn't listen, they feel disrespected. A lot of time we don't care what we what people think or what they go through. Sometimes we keep talking, talking, talking and don't listen. And it's like the people want to tell us, shut up and listen. Shut up. Somebody start telling you about their situation and you, you say, Oh, I know, I know. Have you met somebody when you are talking to them? Oh, I know, I know. Yes, yes, I know. You know everything. Shut up and listen. Just pay attention and listen. Don't interrupt their words. Don't feed them with words. Don't continue their statements. Allow them to be themselves. Let them speak. Listen. Open your ears, your eyes, your heart, and listen to people. Because that's the only way they're going to feel valued. If we don't listen, they will not feel valued. Let's learn to shut up and listen to other people. Often in conversation, you know what we do. When we are having conversation, the only time we pause is when we pause to take a fresh breath. So you are talking, and, and you're taking a fresh breath. That's the only time you pause. The only time you pause is when you have to think about what you have to say next. Because you are always talking and talking and talking and talking. And when we keep talking like that, People feel disrespected because they are not able to have the chance to talk. Have you been in a small group when you are having discussion and it looks like one person wants to talk all the time and the others don't feel the freedom to speak? They feel disrespected. Anytime we are speaking, we want to also be heard. Have you been in the presence of someone and they just gave it to you and they didn't allow you to say anything and they dismiss you? You go back feeling disrespected. A lot of people, when you are talking to them on phone, you are talking and they are talking over you. Because they don't want to keep quiet. One of the values that I, I see in my, I have a brother who lives in Canada. His name is Alex. But Alex, maybe he's watching this video. He's a perfect gentleman. And what I learned from him is I am younger, he's older. But anytime we are talking on phone and I'm saying something or even if he is talking and I interrupt which I'm not supposed to he will not continue. He will say yes, go on, just talk. He will always give me the room to talk. He always wants to say you talk first. He always has the courtesy to let you talk. The moment he gets interrupted, he, he holds on for you to say what you want to say before he comes out to speak. Because what is important is you have to let your listener or somebody you're conversing with have respect, have some value, have that feeling of they are respected. And he does that all the time. And we have to do the same. Do we want to be heard? So we scream over the other person. And we stop them from talking because we have to be talking. 
is a sign of respect. The second thing, keep your promises. Keep your promises. The way of showing respect to people is for us to keep our promises. Let's not do any U turn. Let's keep our promises. We make promises, but we don't honor them. We have no commitment. How many times have you made a promise and never honored the promise? We make promises all the time, but we don't honor them. We just say it. it, it it's like diarrhea of promises. Constipation of execution. We are not living to the expectation of fulfilling our promises. Jesus made a remarkable promise to the woman. He said, your sins are forgiven. And how many of us know that if Jesus says your sins are forgiven, they are really forgiven? The reason why we are here is because he has forgiven us our sins. And that is why we have the platform to stand on to say that we are God's children. Jesus always keep his promises. And I believe that it is leadership, it is integrity, it is value, it is respect for us to keep our promises. When you make a promise, you have to stick to it. Have you ever had someone break a promise they made to you? If somebody breaks a promise they made to you, you begin to feel disrespected. You feel they don't respect you at all. Why would they tell you this and do something else? You feel that you are rejected. You feel that you are dishonored. You feel that you are disconnected. Because they didn't fulfill their promise to you. And many times that is what we do. Even in our meetings with people, you, you set time to meet somebody. And they come an hour late. And they expect you to be feeling, oh, I'm honored to meet you. As a pastor, sometimes I have counseling appointments with people and they don't call, they don't show up and they come two hours later and they just walk into your office and they say, I have come. And you know you have another appointment which is also ready. The moment you tell them, I cannot meet you, your time is passed, they think you are proud. But they, they didn't call two hours late. When you have meetings with people and they don't honor the time, they disrespect you. I, I wonder how God feels in heaven when it comes to church service. Because when I was growing up in the church that I was attending, we were given this idea that anytime the church sets time to meet, that we are meeting 9 o'clock, angels are dispatched to the place exactly 9 o'clock. That's what we were told. <laughs> So can you just imagine that we are starting a service at 7 and you show up at 7.45. It means that you have disrespected God and the angels and everybody that came for that meeting. So how do you feel God feels when it comes to our honoring of our promise of time? We don't show up. Sunday morning, I believe God expects us to be in church so you have contact with us. We don't show up. Any little excuse takes us away from the presence of God. We don't show up. Does God feel respected on this? Well, I don't know. You can answer for yourself. People feel disrespected because we don't honor them in terms of time. And God, I believe, also feels disrespected. Do you realize that in the African culture, in our setting, it is told that the person who comes late is the most important person. So in a function, everybody will sit down and the president will be the last person to come. The moment he comes, the program starts. Everybody is waiting for the president. I have seen a number of prophetic meetings that the people keep singing and dancing, keep singing and dancing while the prophet is in the house. And if the meeting starts at 7 p.m., he comes 11. And everybody is waiting for him because he is the man of God coming to prophesy. So when he comes, he starts his own worship. 
He now wants to lead you in the presence of God. And before you know, the service is into midnight. And it keeps going. In our African setting, we feel like kings and queens anytime we have an appointment with somebody or we have an appointment with God. And we make these people feel disrespected because we are not there on the time that is set and agreed on. And I don't think that is an honor. I think that is dishonor. We have to respect people and we have to respect God. In Proverbs chapter 25 verse 14, the message Bible says, people who promise things that they never give are like clouds and wind that bring no rain. You promise something and you don't give. It's like cloud that brings no rain. You are empty. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 37, the new living, the new international version, Jesus said, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. A lot of times, we make financial pledges. We don't even honor them. Even right in church, we make pledges. We don't honor them. And sometimes we think it's just a simple thing. It's dishonoring God. We promise. We make vows. And we don't honor them. And we think it's okay. Any promise and vow you make financially in the house of God, you are not making it to a man, you are making it to God. And if you don't honor it, you are disrespecting God. That is how we have to see it. Sometimes we are waiting for us to be prompted. We are waiting for somebody to chase us. The moment you make the promise is between you and God and you have to honor it. Because it is unto God. Most of the time, we break our promises because we make them hastily. When you make a hasty promise, you're going to break them. You need to look at your schedule and look at the possibility of what is going to happen and what may not happen before you make a promise. You don't make promises and not honor them. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 21 and 22, the New Living Translation says that God good planning and insight and insight fill you with life and they bring you honor and respect good planning and insight fill you with life and they bring you honor and respect have you ever noticed that children feel very honored when they are when you make promises to them and you fulfill it. Children thrive on promises. When it's getting to Christmas, they want to take a promise of this is what you buy, this is what you do. When you promise a child toffee, they will hold you accountable because they will chase you until you said you said you do this. Because promises are important to them and when you honor them by doing what you said you do, they have great respect for you. If you don't honor them, anytime you promise, you say, oh, you, you tell lies. They may be children, but they may not respect you because children always want promises to be fulfilled. And that is how our relationships must be. We must always honor our promises. When you look at all that we're talking about, we can see through the Bible and all that we're saying that God models the ideal way of fulfilling promises that he has made. When God promises something, he honors it. During the flood, he promised Noah that he will not destroy the earth again with water. And he gave the rainbow as a sign that anytime you see this, it means I'm living to my expectation. God honors what he says. Abraham, 99 years old, his wife, 89 years old, a weak man, old man, and God promises them a child and God comes through. He was 100 and he had a son. Because God will fulfill what he has said. God said he will give us a savior. 
to forgive us our sins and to reconnect us back to him through the Old Testament and in the New Testament we see the coming of Jesus. We see Jesus dying on the cross using his blood to seal the covenant, the promise of God. Anytime we have communion, we feel that value that God allow himself to die just to bring us into play. This is how God honors his word. He values people and he makes people feel valued. We show value and honor to others when we keep our promises to them. So keep your promise to others. Make sure you keep your promise. Make sure you honor God. Make sure that you do what is right because that is what God expects of us. The third thing that we can do to respect people, we have to yield our rights and serve others that come into our lives. Yield your rights and serve others. Yield. Yielding is willfully giving out what is your right. It's your right, but you, you choose to give it out anyway. It's like sharing food. And everybody gets their portion. And somebody comes and he didn't get any. And he said, I have mine. This is my right, but I choose to give it to you. It's my choice. I'm not being forced to give it, but I give it. It's yielding. We have to yield. You and I have to learn how to yield and serve others. It's difficult for a lot of us to serve others. Serving others is not something that is on our mind. But we have to serve others. We have to yield. We have to give in and help others. When people want to be first, when they want to get all the attention or have everybody waiting on them, you realize that those that are waiting feel very disrespected. For instance, when you go to a place like their the offering service, let's say you've gone to the bank and everybody wants to be attended to by the cashier and it gets to your turn and there's a long queue behind you and after you have deposited your money or you have done your redrawal or finished with your transaction, you are still standing there and having a conversation with a cashier which has nothing to do with banking. You say, oh, it's a long time. How are you doing? How are the children? And you keep asking questions. How would the people standing behind feel? They feel disrespected. They say, clear off, you finish your job so we can also have our, our time and portion. So, when we want to be seen and giving all the attention, others feel disrespected. But if we choose to put our rights aside and we give back in service, people begin to respect us. You have the right to do something, but you decide I'm not going to do it. I'm going to identify with the people and serve them. People begin to respect you. Look at politics. People who serve their communities and are there with the people when it comes to valuing the person, they do value the person. They vote for the person. Those who disappear completely and come back after four years <laughs> to come and pretend as if they are with the people, sometimes they vote against them. So we have to be able to connect ourselves. This story of the woman and Jesus is so tender. It is a picture of her service to God. She was offering service without thinking of the expense and she was not thinking of the shame. Whatever she was doing to God, it didn't matter how expensive it was. It didn't matter how shameful it was. If a lot of us are asked to go out and preach now because your friends will see you, it's shameful to you. Sometimes we don't even want to identify ourselves as Christians. Because we don't want the world to know who we are. It's shameful to us. But the woman could use her hair and she was not ashamed. The woman could pour expensive perfume at the feet of Jesus, but she never thought of the cost. The cost was irrelevant. There's nothing that you can give to God that is more expensive than God. And we as a people must bring things to God that are expensive. Have you ever found somebody serving you and they do it without thinking of their needs and their personal interests? They just serve you. It makes you feel valued. 
it makes you or have you also done something to somebody and it doesn't matter what your needs were but you serve the other person it made them feel valued in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 Paul wrote this word he said so I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expand myself as well I'll spend for you everything I have and I'll expand myself as well people are more valuable it doesn't matter what we spend we have to value people what we bring to people must be of value don't bring things that you don't like things that are of no use to you is when you throw it at people some of us we have shoes we have clothes we have things we want to give to people we keep them until they are nearly torn into pieces we keep them until they are destroyed before we give it to people how do you value others respect them value people so many of us have shallow friendship we have shallow marriages we build on selfishness because everything is about us and it's not about yielding or serving others we have to benefit husbands and wives disrespect each other because everyone is thinking of their benefit and not serving the other an example of yielding and serving is showing common courtesy bible says that the woman jesus was drawing a sharp contraction between a sharp comparison between the two the the attitude of the Pharisee Simon and the attitude of the woman the man didn't provide water for his feet washing the woman washed with her tears and wiped with her hair the man didn't kiss Jesus welcome the woman kissed the feet of Jesus not even the cheek the feet of Jesus the man never anointed Jesus' feet the, the woman anointed, never anointed his head, but the woman anointed his feet with oil. She showed courtesy. Service is marked by courtesy. Anytime we serve, it has to be marked by courtesy. You cannot show deeds of kindness and do it reluctantly and still feel that they will be valued. That is really not a service. Any service without courtesy is no service. It means that when you are serving someone or doing something and you do it reluctantly, it's of no value. And we see that in friendship. We see that even in the church. There are people who come to God and they start serving God enthusiastically. They are putting everything they have. Then along the line, they begin to attract attention. They begin to say, if you don't do this for me, I'm not going to do this. They make it look like you have to draw everything out of them before they serve. You beg them to serve. You, you have to appreciate them to the core before they serve. They begin to think that they are serving you. They don't begin to realize that they are serving God. If you are being begged to serve in the church, if you are being pleaded to, or we have to please you to be able to come around and do something, we have to chase you and beg you all the time to do something, that service is of no value. Because service must come with courtesy. It must come with a yielding. You have a right, but you decide, this is what I want to do. That's what service is about. We have to be able to honor God with our services. Service is also when we do our very best for others. Are you doing your very best? If you do your very best for others, it really shows that you respect them. And that is why you are serving them. The woman didn't come with anything that is available attitude. She came with her best. And we have to come with our best. She came not with, I believe she had cheap perfumes, but she didn't come with any cheap perfume. She came with her best. What you are rendering to God, is it your best? What you are giving to God, is it your best? The Bible talks about we giving our best to the Lord. In Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8, the Bible says that the Lord Almighty says, I am your father and master. 
but where are the honor and the respect that I deserve? You, are, you have despised my name. You have, how have we despised your name? And God says, you've despised my name by offering defiled sacrifices. And the people said, how have we done that? Here's an example. Instead of feeling the best lamb, or giving God what is the best. These people will look for anything that is crippled or has no value. And that is what they give. They look for sick animals. And they give to God. And how many times do we bring what we don't want to God? Offerings. Tight. Somebody just bring something and call it tight. Whilst we know what tight is. How many times do we offer? I want to appeal to you. On 29th, we are having our thanksgiving. And in the thanksgiving, I want you to come to God with something that will show God respect. I'm trusting God for 50 people in this church that will give a thousand and beyond. Because what God has done for you you will take a loan and build your house. You will take a loan and buy a car. You will take a loan and do something. If you know that God has preserved your life, it doesn't matter what you would do to be able to honor him. And I'm trusting that I will get not less than 50 people in this house that will give a thousand and beyond and say, we want to honor God. I want to see 50 people and beyond that will say we want to give 500 and above. I want us to come with, with this mindset that we want to honor God on 29th of November. And I'm looking forward to it. The last point, and I close, slow down and take time to see others like God does. Slow down. Slow down. If you don't slow down, you will not see others. Let's be transparent and see others. Let's see through so we can honor people. Everybody saw the woman as an interruption at best. And they saw her as a whore at worst. But not Jesus. Jesus saw her differently. Jesus saw something in her. Please don't write people off. See value in people. Honor people. Cherish people. Respect them. And when you respect people and you value them, God will also respect you and value you. Who do you have to value this week? Is it God? Is it people? Who do you have to show respect in your act? I pray that you will be able to embark on it and support everyone in respect and in love. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you help us in this task. It may look huge, but with you, we can sail through it. Pray for my brothers and sisters that, Lord, you will come through for us. And help us to be able to respect one another. And respect you. And respect your call upon our lives and what we do with people. So your name will be honored. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. All my days on earth I will away. The moment that I see you face to face Cause nothing in this world will satisfy But Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry Nothing in this world will satisfy But Jesus you're the cup that won't 
Jesus, you're the cup that won't run. 